One of the biggest questions surrounding the Mountain West is what is UNLV going to do to repeat what they did last year? A 9-5 and five season came kind of out of nowhere, and Barry Odom deserves a lot of credit for what he did, but can they do it again? Today we take a deep dive into the UNLV Rebels to see what we should expect for 2024. Before we do that, though, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video. It goes a long way in helping this series as well as the channel as a whole. We have grown tremendously since May, since we started doing these deep dives, and it's been a really fun process. It's been great to hear from all of you, so let's keep that going with UNLV. We'll start with Barry Odom came in after what we saw with Marcus Arroyo. You didn't really know what was going to happen. Larry Odom had coaching experience and head coaching experience, but he didn't necessarily coach at a, a school like UNLV where you thought that he was going to turn things around in year one. And that was a big surprise. Now, a lot of that has to do with the guys that he brought in and the players that he developed. But I think offensive coordinator Brendan Marion deserves a lot of love. The fact that they were able to retain him after last year was pretty impressive. I think a lot of people wanted him as their head coach. So to get him back was a huge win for UNLV. He's a big reason why this offense was an explosive group, and they expect that to be the case once again this year. Mike Scherer is going to have a little bit of more work to do on the defensive side of the ball. The defense wasn't as strong as the offense, but they do have plenty of talent to make improvements in 2024 and take steps forward to be better than they were last year. So that's promising. If you're a UNLV fan, the fact that you were so close to a conference title gives you a goal for this year. And when you look at what they brought in from the transfer portal, it kind of tells you that they feel pretty good about where they're at, where they need to be, and what they need in terms of position help and depth at certain other places. I think the biggest one is going to be Matthew Sluka. That's going to be probably the biggest one that we talked about just because he plays the quarterback position. And we'll talk about another reason why in a little bit when we dive into the certain positions. But I think Sluka is going to be probably the biggest one that everyone looks at because you you lost some players that it was kind of expected, but at the same time, you're also – hoping that you can find a replacement that keeps things going. Bringing Jarvis Ware from UCF was an interesting addition. I think that he'll be a solid piece in the rotation of the secondary. You also bring in Jalen Catalan from Texas and Tony Grimes from Texas A&M. So you have a couple of starters that are coming in from the transfer portal that should be Big time players. You also bring a couple of Arkansas transfers on the defensive side of the ball in Manny Powell and Malik Chavis. So I really like what this team did, especially on defense. A couple of other notes Kylan James comes from Central Arkansas at running back, and Michael Allen comes in from NC State. So you lost a few players that maybe you feel a little worried about, but I think that the staff did a good job of replacing that talent. Obviously, Sluka is going to be the, the biggest question mark. So let's dive into that. When you saw what happened last year, you thought that Doug Brumfield was going to be the starter going into the year. And you thought that that was going to be your quarterback. That obviously did not happen. And Jane Maeva took over and lit the world on fire for UNLV. He was a big reason why this team went nine to five and now he's gone. He enters the transfer portal, ends up at UNLV. Brumfield ultimately retires. So that's uh, a bit concerning if you are a UNLV fan. That's too bad. But you also bring in Sluka, who I think has some really promising talent as a dual threat. You look at what he did at Coley Cross. Last year, over 1,700 yards passing, 20 touchdowns. He also rushed for 1,200, over 1,200 yards and nine more scores. So he is a dual threat that can open things up. And I really like what Brennan Marion can do with his skill set. He is going to make this offense even more electric. And when you look at the talent that Unity returns, it's easy to see why you should be excited if you're a Rebels fan, because you have plenty of talent surrounding him. You have plenty of talent to utilize in the passing game. And the rushing attack, while it is going to be a couple of new faces, you're going to see 
plenty of talented players that have been productive in the past. Jane Thomas is going to be the first guy that gets a crack at it. 503 yards and 12 touchdowns last year. So he is a proven weapon for this offense. You'd like to see his production go up, obviously, this year, if you want to be more efficient on the ground. But Saluka is obviously going to add to that as well. Michael Allen comes in from NC State. Now, Michael Allen is a player who, when healthy, is a really fun back to watch. Five foot 11, 210 pounds. You like the physicality in which he runs the football. You just obviously, like I said, need to keep him on the field. But when you have the amount of talent that you bring in for for UNLV, I think that you're feeling pretty good about depth. You're feeling good about the touches you can distribute and give these guys chances to show what they can do. For depth, we talked about Callan James already. He is an interesting player because for Central Arkansas, he only rushed for 425 yards and five touchdowns, but he averaged 8.7 yards per carry. So he is explosive. You also look that he had 500 yards receiving and four touchdowns. So UNLV has a weapon, I think, in Kylan James that the Mountain West is not ready for. And you pair him again. I really like what Brendan Marion can do in terms of a play caller. So he is someone that can utilize the talent like that get him out in space, and find ways to porch opposing defenses. Greg Burrell is a freshman that should be part of that rotation as well. Maybe he'll take a a red shirt because of the talent he has in front of him, but the staff really likes what they have in him. Behind Sluka is where we have some talent in terms of different levels of it, but you also have more concerns. You bring in Haj Malik Williams, Brum Campbell, another productive player at the quarterback position at the FCS level, 2,600 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, 265 yards on the ground, and five more scores. You also bring back back Cameron Friel, 364 yards and three touchdowns in 2022. He is back and healthy, so we'll see what happens with that quarterback battle. But again, this should be Sluka to start, and we'll see what happens as the season progresses. I really am excited to see what he can do as a dual threat under Brendan Marion because Marion has done a lot of good things. We saw what happened last year. The offense success was primarily because Marion was calling the shots. And he's also a good recruiter. We know that. We saw that at his time in Texas. We're seeing that at UNLV. And it's going to be fun to watch this offense because you bring in certain talent to replace certain guys. And the passing attack, is going to bring in a player that I think complements the returning talent really well. Ricky White is obviously the wide receiver that everybody knows when you talk about UNLV. He's probably the one player that if you are not a UNLV fan, if you're a casual college football fan, you might know his name. Uh, But people definitely know what Ricky White is capable of doing. He's already been making plays in the spring, and he is an explosive weapon for this offense. Over 1,400 yards last year and eight touchdowns. Now, a lot of people knew what he was capable of last year. Still caught 88 passes, nearly averaging 17 yards per catch. So he is a, a proven playmaker that teams typically don't know how to handle. That being said, depth is going to be critical for this offense. If you can find players that can step up and produce while Ricky White is getting a lot of that attention, you're going to have a successful season. So a guy like Jacob DeJesus is going to play a bigger role Five foot seven hundred seventy five pounds. You're going to be used more in those short to intermediate spaces. Six hundred six yards and two touchdowns. More of that possession receiver, but still someone who can have a bigger impact. Had sixty catches last year, so they definitely targeted him a lot. Now you just need to find someone to also play opposite of Ricky White, and I think you get that in Casey Kane. Six foot three, two hundred pounds. Now he only had one catch last year. But I really like what he's capable of doing. I, Brendan Marion's very familiar with him. He knows what his skill set is, knows probably how to utilize him in this offense. And that's really going to be fun to watch. Casey Kane is someone who could have a breakout year because everyone's focusing on Ricky White. Everybody knows the top two options. So the third option could have a big year, right? They're the third option now, but they could emerge as a more prominent option because people are focused so much on 
those other guys too. Kaleo Bolunge is going to be another factor. Six foot seven, 265 pounds. So you have a couple of big targets downfield. So Saluka, even if he needs time to get acclimated with his new personnel, he knows that he has bigger targets downfield and a proven one in Ricky White. That's a good situation for any quarterback coming into a new school. And this passing attack should be a pretty good one. Finished 56th. Nearly averaged 240 yards per game through the air. So this is a group that definitely knows what they're doing, throwing the football, and they have the right guys in place. That piece is probably where people might have questions, but you also bring in some talent. Jaden Bradley comes in from Charlotte. D'Angelo Irvin and Corey Thompson are back. Again, they didn't have a ton of production, but those are guys who are, are familiar with the system. They're familiar with the program, and they can help the new guys get up to speed, but also play roles when you need to rotate in at tight end, you bring in, you bring back Christian Earls and you bring in Christian Moore from Kansas state. Now, if you're going to bet on a team to have a solid tight end transfer, it's probably going to be Kansas state. So if you're a UNLV fan, you probably feel pretty good about what the offense is going to put on the field this year because of the skill positions. The biggest question is going to be the offensive line because you have a good mix of experience and brand new talent. So, It'll be interesting to see where all of these guys end up playing because you saw a number of rotations last year. You saw some guys switch around. Tiger Shanks is someone who's been a prominent player for this offensive line quite a bit. But then you also have some new players like Austin Boyd and Anton Amigil. So you're going to get a good blend of we're going to need some time to figure things out. But also we have these guys like a Tiger Shanks, like a Jalen St. John, Jake has. Those are guys who have experience and are going to get everyone else up to speed and get them ready because the skill position talent, like I said, is good. You need to get your new quarterback involved. Having has back is probably the biggest win for them to be able to get him uh, with this new quarterback, whoever that might be, if it's Luca or someone else, that's going to be huge. You have a leader of the offense, someone who is capable of helping out your quarterback, see certain things or understand this is the check we're going to run. This is what we need to look for. That's going to be huge. So this offensive line should be solid. Once again, the depth behind them, there's a couple of pieces that are interesting. Matthias Sua is probably the biggest one. We'll see if he is actually going to be the starter. Him and Austin Boyd are two guys to keep an eye on. Those are guys who will be part of that rotation. I think Sua will definitely see time. The other players, though, are, are relatively inexperienced. Will Thomas, Graham Keating, and Anthony Rosas all have one, at least one game of experience under their belt. Redshirt freshman Ed Haynes is another guy that could play a more prominent role. So inexperience is probably the theme overall with the entire offensive line, but you have some veterans coming back that will make life more enjoyable for this offense because the offensive line plays a huge role. If they don't thrive, you're probably not going to see a ton of success, but that's just part of it. You need to, you understand you need to get those guys going. You need to get them up to speed. And the offense, like I said, has plenty of pieces returning, which means that they might be asked to carry things early in the season. But this defense has some in interesting players that are both returning and transferring in. So the first one we'll talk about is Jalen Dixon. I think Jalen Dixon is one of the more slept on players in the Mountain West. Defensive end had 29 tackles, six tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. You need to be more disruptive if you're UNLV. This is a group that struggled slowing teams down, and you have to be more disruptive. That's probably going to be the biggest thing there. So guys like Jalen Dixon, Alexander Whitmore, and Antonio Martinson are going to play bigger roles because they have to – be disruptive and get guys up to speed, but you have good depth. I think at the defensive line position, you bring in Antonio Doyle jr. From Texas A&M, a guy who didn't produce a ton with the Aggies, but has a good frame and one that could be an instant impact player. Now, you really did a good job of bringing in multiple power five transfers. So that's going to be interesting to see how those guys acclimate to life in the group of five. But you also know that they have the talent to make life miserable for the teams that they face. So this defensive line, Jalen Dixon is going to lead the way. I like the combination of Dixon and Doyle. I like that Whitmore is coming back, very productive player. And then Martinson's 
very underrated at his spot as well. You also have pretty good depth pieces behind them. So you have productive players. Keith Conley Jr., 19 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, two sacks. Cooper Webb, 28 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, two sacks as well. And then a couple other guys are going to play roles, but maybe not as productive as some of those guys. But I really like that front group. And I think that the the battles in practice between the offensive line and the defensive line will be really intriguing to watch. That's going to be where you get your team better because if your, your offensive line and defensive line can be more efficient with what they do, you're looking at a team that's going to take a step forward as a whole because the guys in the trenches are getting the job done. The linebacker position to me is probably the most experienced and the most talented of maybe not actually, but probably the most productive. I think uh, I would give the secondary the most talent, but the most productive group is going to be this group of linebackers and you get Jackson Woodard back. That was a huge win for UNLV to get him to come back. 116 tackles last year, nine tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. He is the leader of this defense. He is someone who knows what the expectations are for UNLV. He knows exactly what this group needs to do to get better. And he's a, a veteran who can get everyone else going. Marcel McDuffie comes back as well. 89 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. So that's a good year. It's just that you're also playing with Jackson Woodard, who is a proven playmaker and knows how to make big time plays. So that's really fun. If you are a UNLV fan, I think that you're looking at a group that should be pretty good. And, and part of it is also the defensive line like I said, is going to play a big role. But also, if they're able to do their job, they are going to open things up for the linebackers to make more disruptive plays, make more plays in the backfield. And that's going to be huge. So the the, the defensive line will play a bigger role because the, the linebackers, I think, for the most part, did a better job mopping up, you know, leaks to the second and third levels. But you need to find ways up front to be better than what you were because this is a group of linebackers, like I said, can make plays, but they'd rather make more disruptive plays than have to clean up any messes that are left for them up front. And that's why I think the defensive line can be better and will be more disruptive, which helps the defense as a whole. Behind these guys, you have plenty of talent. Now, if Brennan Scott can get back to healthy, this is someone who in 2021, 35 tackles, nine and a half tackles for loss, four sacks. He can be a big part of this rotation. You also get Manny Powell from Arkansas. He is someone that can figure into that rotation as well. So they have options. It's not that they're hurting for depth. It's not that they're hurting for talent. It's just you need to get everyone up to speed and you need to play at the level that you're capable of doing. And the same kind of goes for the secondary. This is a team that finished 113th against the pass last year. That needs to get better. And they went out, this coaching staff went out and brought in talent to fix that. Cameron Oliver, obviously, is a proven commodity for the Rebels. 53 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, five interceptions to lead the team last year. He is a proven playmaker, and he's just looking for other help. You also get Jonathan Baldwin back at the strong safety position, 77 tackles, four tackles for loss. Jet Elad, the former Ohio transfer, is going to play the star position, 57 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, six passes defended. So you have three guys that are going to be solid but you bring in two intriguing players. Jalen Catalan and Tony Grimes kind of have similar stories in a way. They started off really strong their freshman year. Everyone thought that they were going to be superstars. And then either for, in Catalan's case, injuries kind of ruined his consistency. And for Tony Grimes, just inconsistent play kind of derailed those trajectories. Catalan went from Arkansas to Texas and now is with UNLV. Tony Grimes went from North Carolina to Texas A&M and now is with the Rebels as well. Grimes has good size, 6'2", 190 pounds. He is someone who is capable of playing that big-time role at corner. And opposite of Cameron Oliver, I think a lot of teams are going to test him to see if he's actually that guy. Going against Ricky White in this passing attack should help this group as well. Catalan is going to be fun to watch. I think that he has the ability to get back 
to not to his all American form. I think the injuries are kind of limiting his explosiveness, but he is still someone who could be a factor. He is someone who is definitely capable of being a big role player for this secondary. And I think someone who has all conference type talent, you also bring plenty of talent from the transfer portal to back up some of these guys. We talked about Malik Chavis, another guy who the thing kind of in the secondary is you have guys who showed promise early in their career. And then for whatever reasons, just didn't pan out as well as you might've thought or injuries or whatever it would be the case. Another Arkansas transfer, Ladarius Bishop will be another corner that figures into the rotation. Cody DeCambra from Oregon will be a fun safety to watch as pretty good talent as a red redshirt freshman. We talked about Jarvis Ware earlier a guy who has bounced around a little bit comes in from UCF and it definitely has the capability to fill in at the safety positions when needed. So the, the strengths and concerns for this team are pretty, pretty obvious. I think that wide receiver is an easy strength to me. Uh, what do you, what you're going to get from that group is pretty consistent, pretty obvious with Ricky white. Casey Kane was obviously a good addition. Jacob DeJesus is good. I think that linebacker is a strength. You can make an argument that the defensive line is actually a strength, which I do think that they are. I think that is a solid group. They have good depth. They have good starters. That's going to be fun. Concerns is going to be quarterback. You have two FCS transfers coming in and a guy who hasn't played since 2022. You're going to have concerns, especially trying to replace a guy like Jane Maeva. Now you do have Brendan Marion, like I said, recalling the plays. So if you are a UNLV fan, you should feel pretty good even with some of those concerns. Running back depth to me is okay. I think that you're looking for guys to one, stay healthy and to prove they can make the jump to the FBS level. Highland James is really intriguing. I think I'm pretty high on him. And again, this is like a slight concern more than anything. The offensive line probably is, is going to be a concern. I think that you have to get everything going up front. You have to find guys that are going to take steps forward and be more experienced and the offensive line kind of dictates how far this group goes the x factor could be that offensive line it also could be the quarterback position either way it's the offense uh, that is the x factor because if the quarterback position can't get things figured out this team will struggle even if the defense takes slight steps forward there will be times where they struggle and they need the offense to step up so you need those guys to be bigger than what they've been in the past. So that's going to be something that's fun to watch if you're UNLV. It's also going to dictate what you do for the 2024 season. The schedule is pretty interesting because you have this new look Mountain West and UNLV is, according to Vegas, has a seven and a half win total. To me, the ceiling is nine and three, floor is six and six. This is a team that's definitely capable of getting back the conference championship game and getting back to the top of the conference. And it's just a matter of what are you going to be able to do to win some of those tough football games? And things have changed for a couple of teams on their schedule. I think that you're looking at a team that has the capability of, well, not the capability anymore of, of surprising people, but you still have the ability to, surprise a couple teams that are new you don't have that ability anymore with the mountain west teams because they know what you are capable of you you know that they're ready for you and they're they're ready for guys like ricky white so you're gonna have to find ways to adjust but i really like what this coaching staff is going to do and I think that this is going to be an interesting team to watch. At Houston is a tough way to start the season. That is a game, even with Houston isn't what they they want to be, but that's still going to be a tough game. So that's a coin flip game to me, unless Houston has taken a step under Willie Fritz. Utah Tech should be a win. At Kansas will be a loss. That Kansas team is very good, and I don't know if UNLV has – the weapons to handle that Fresno state to me was going to be a tough game, but now that Jeff Tedford is no longer going to be the head coach for the Bulldogs. I'm curious to see what you or Fresno state, excuse me, looks like when it, when UNLV is, is going to play them. that's going to be a different game. I think Fresno state might be a, a little worse 
because Tedford is not running the show anymore. So we will see what happens with the Bulldogs there. Syracuse coming to, to UNLV to Las Vegas is a very interesting game. I love random power five, power teams, whatever, that come to group of five programs. I, I like that they'll do that. And there's a number of them this year that are really fun. But Syracuse is a tough game. That is going to be a much better team under Fran Brown. So that will be interesting. Another team that's going through coaching change, Utah State. This is a road game, which is tough for UNLV. And Utah State is going to be playing the season with a chip on his shoulder. Blake Anderson is out as the head coach. So this is a team that maybe is a little bit more motivated, trying to play for their former coach there. At Oregon State, That's this is where things get interesting. So they don't get Washington State, but they do get at Oregon State. So that's a tough road trip in Corvallis. Following that up with Boise State, obviously that's tough. A trip out to Hawaii. Hawaii is a team that could be much better in the Mountain West this year. So that's a team to keep an eye on. San Diego State, like another team that maybe is a little bit better. John Lewis is ready to make this an offensive team. So this could be an absolute barn burner if teams are playing Michigan State, both teams are playing well. At San Jose State, another team that we're not really sure about, going through a coaching change to Ken Neomachalolo. So that's something to keep an eye on there. And then at or home against Nevada should be a win. So when you go through it, if you're looking at it from a realistic standpoint, you're probably looking at seven, maybe eight wins. And I think that the, the ceiling of nine and three makes sense because you just have some games that I don't think are going to be win. I think that Kansas, Syracuse, and Oregon State slash Boise State are for sure losses. So you're going to have at least three losses on there, but maybe they'll surprise people again. But you, at the same time, I don't think they go below six and six. I think this is still a really good team. It's a bold team for sure. So I think that they're going to be somewhere in between then, but still very exciting if you're a UNLV fan and there's a lot of things to look forward to in 2024.